Amy Egger community, we're really lucky to be joined today by Michael Riotti, who's a former real estate agent who actually pivoted into one of my favorite things, which is delicious specialty coffee. And he's got a really cool story on keeping customers happy and having a mission behind his business. So I'm really excited for him to dive into these topics. But first, he's going to introduce himself and his story a little bit, and then we'll get into a few more detailed topics. So go right ahead, Michael. Thank you, Megan. Um, so um, my name is Michael. Uh, I'm originally born in Indonesia. I live in Los Angeles today. Um, I was a former real estate executive for the last 14 years. I've been building real estate, specifically retail shopping malls, um, buying, developing, disposing real estate all my life. Um, and and then I, you know, one day I just literally said, you know what, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And I want to go do something else, which was really close to my heart and something that I enjoyed, which was coffee. And so I decided to start, you know, working on coffee. Um, I mean, this is a long story short. Um, and then I packed my bags and, and then I moved to America and then I started my company here. That, that is the long story short. So I've been doing coffee now on a full-time basis for the last four years, but I've been thinking about coffee more than four years. It's just that I couldn't pivot straight to coffee because I had a lot on my plate. So, but it was a, a long plan that has been on, yeah. on board. So. That is such an interesting story. And I think one of the things I'd love to dive into first is this idea of just deciding to do it. So many of us have these dreams about the business and the niches that we want to pivot into and the people that we can help and the things that we're passionate about. But it's like setting that deadline and actually taking the leap to get into this area and start that business that really holds a lot of us back. So can you give some actionable tips to the community on how you actually got started from nothing and built up business around your passion all right I'll share a little bit about mine I mean I'm pretty sure you know everybody has uh, you know different uh, ways of approaching it um, the way I was thinking was I started in coffee because I always thought about what is the easiest way uh, what's the easiest way um, for me to do it successfully and 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 um, so my family some of my nephews were uh, uh, cousins, uncles were all in the coffee plantation business. So first thing was, okay, where can I start learning? Let's, let's kind of do the low hanging fruit stuff, right? Um, so I thought, okay, I have a starting point. I can go there, uh, go to the uh, farms, go to the coffee shops and learn and, and just kind of start doing it, right? So that's number one. Number two, I think the bigger vision of why I started this company was I said to myself, who, what does uh america needs that indonesia has um and that indonesia can provide right and so the question was america is the largest consumer of coffee in the world but they don't grow coffee in the country and indonesia is the fourth largest coffee producer in the world and and you know so it makes natural sense to put that together so i said okay that's where i want to be i want to be in a position where uh, there's something that we can fulfill. So that's another thing. And I think the last, I mean, there's a lot, lot of ways to do it, but I think one of the things that is about me is I just believe that vision, uh, that dream. And I just say, you know what, you just got to do it. So just get started. Like you can plan a lot of things on paper, but you just got to get started. So I just get started, invest a little bit of money, money that I feel like I can afford to play around with, you know, just to get things going, test it, build the prototype and and just build it you know i don't know where it's going to take me but let's try it you know that's all yeah, that's really cool. I think there's some things I'd love to tease out here. This idea of just taking what you know and learning a little more on that. So Michael had this idea that there's a lot of knowledge that he can get from his own family in this industry. And that was the first step. So I'm sure there's a step that you guys can take out there that might be smaller than you think. But that's kind of how you get the momentum going is just taking that next step that's so small to learn and it'll start snowballing from there. And also just this idea of understanding the product market fit in the way that you did is incredible. So if you're someone who knows you want to start a business, but you're not quite sure what to start yet, I love Michael's approach here saying, okay, what do I have access to that people in this market actually
actually need. And finding that for Americans love coffee and his family having ties to that is a beautiful marriage there. And last that I think, but certainly not least is just getting started. We think we have to have plan A to Z all mapped out before we do anything at all, but that's truly not the way to approach it. So I love that just jumping in, starting to do things and learning from it is so, so important. Um, cool. So I would love to know a little bit more about once you started having success in your business, can you talk to us a little bit about maybe some challenge that came up within your business or something that you really feel like you either failed at or some learning um, curve that you could teach our community today so that they can really avoid that step if they're starting their own business? Oh, wow. I made a lot of mistakes. I, mean, <laughs> I have to tell you. Um, entrepreneurship is really fun. It's really exciting. But, you know, um, it, uh, 2000, I would say 2018 was the most challenging year in my entire career. Uh, more challenging than I was doing real estate. Because when I was in real estate, I was working for somebody. And, you know, working for somebody, the resources are on the table. You just got to utilize it. When you're an entrepreneur, the resources are not on the table. So you got to, and you have limited resources. So everything was so challenging and it was kind of like me, myself. So everything falls on my shoulders. Like there's always problems every single day. So I think, you know, uh, um, th th that's too, too many problems. But I think the way I approach it was number one, um, I try to hire good people. Um, uh, really, I, I, I mean, honestly, I went through a lot of people. It was constantly a turnover because i think to build a great company any great companies today you're gonna have a great team and a great team is a process of finding the best people that kind of gels together and they work well in a team and and it's not easy because everybody have different character people in different parts of their life we have great people that we hire and then one day they said, you know what, I got to go back to school. I, 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 you know, I got to move out of town. I got to go back to my family. Then we're like, man, we lost her or him again. Now we got to recruit and then we found the best one. And then turns out that's not the, the, the greatest one that we hope for. You know, there's constantly that, that fixing, that fine tuning, uh, finding and finding the best, uh, the best people to help you. Because honestly, you cannot do run a company by yourself at the end of the day. So finding the best people, um, and everything that works together is, is probably the most important. Um, um, and, and, and I think the other stuff is really just doing it. I mean, I remember, I mean, a lot of people called me up from Indonesia and said, hey, Michael, you must be so much fun in America. I want to be like you. I want to go out there. I said, that's easy. Just pack your bags and get started. Right. <laughs> just pack your bags tomorrow. Like me, follow me. I just Take a, get on the plane, you know. It's it's you know it's easy to just say to you, you know like oh he's great she's great but you know I took the step and every step was hard and you know honestly I remember having to go through the permits as you know in California mm -hmm. you know trying to get go through health permit the the process trying to get through your organic process I mean man I didn't know anything about that process I just started I started Google research on where to get my consultant where to get this. And they gave me a pile of paperwork. I start reading it, go through it. And, and then after a year goes by, I'm like, oh, okay, it's not as hard as it seems to be. Because once you go through the process, it's kind of like, okay, it's pretty straightforward, mm -hmm. right? The first part was scary. But then once you do it, and so, if you find someone who can guide you, then it, it's a lot easier. Then you slowly build confidence and momentum. And you're like, okay, I'm getting it. And then the second year and the third year is a completely different challenge. Yeah, that's really wise. I feel like it's that kind of overused quote that it's not always what you know, it's who you know. And thinking about like, rather than thinking about how you solve a problem, sometimes you truly should think about who do you know who can solve this problem better than you could. And having that humility to know what you're really good at in starting a business and working in that zone of genius and then bringing really great people onto your team. So take that advice and know that you don't have to do everything as you're growing your team, bringing new members on who are experts in their area is one of those best things you can do. I totally agree with that. Um, cool. So our community is made up of a lot of people who are looking for marketing tips. So do you have any sort of tips as you were getting started that you feel like got you a lot of traction within your industry and got a lot of the marketing aspects um, that you were hoping for to give you the results you wanted? Uh, yes. Yeah. So when I started this business, uh, and I mean, related to the last question we were talking about, uh, 
I think the key is really、um, finding the key、uh, difference in your company in your、uh, product, right?、Um, everybody's trying to see, okay, wh- why, wh- you know, how do you separate yourself? What's, you know? So I said to myself, you know what? Business is already hard. Life is hard enough. Everything's hard enough. Why make it harder, right? So I said, you know, if you look at、um, Uh, companies like Panda Express, right? I mean, great, big fast food Chinese restaurant. I said, that guy, the founder, has been doing that business for over thirty years. That's all he does: one business, extremely focused, and he does it so great. And today, Panda Express has I don't know, maybe five thousand stores、uh, nationwide, and one of the most successful、uh, stories, right?、Mm-hmm. Just by focusing on being the best. Asian Chinese restaurant that nobody does it better than them, and if you look at、um, companies like Scotch Whiskies, right? I went to Scotland a、uh, couple years ago, and I, I spent a month driving all over Scotland. I say, what do people really do up here? And I realized that one of the biggest industries here are whiskies, and the Scotch are so great at doing their whiskey. I went to a lot of distilleries, and they're so proud of their distilleries, the Scotch. The you know the Highlands, the Space Side, all the different parts of you know of whiskey coming from that country. And you look at the Japanese; they're really great at doing their Japanese whiskey. And then you look at American whiskey, the same thing. And you look at wine; they're the same thing, right? French wine, Italian wine,、uh, Australian wine. So I realized that the key is really in marketing is really find out what you're good at, what you're specialized at, and be focused on that. Uh, and not try to serve everybody. So when I look at the coffee industry, I said to myself, "Well, I think that's something that we should be doing because I think the coffee industry is not like the whiskey, the、uh, wine industry,、uh, or the store of Panda." So I said, "You know what? I'm just going to focus on Indonesian coffee. I want to be the best fo- Indonesian focused specialty coffee roaster company. That's it. Thirty years from now, fifty years from now, we're going to be known as the number one brand that comes from Indonesia. I want to be." So, um, our goal is to be so exclusive and so focused that the outcome is exceeding expectations. We don't want to meet expectations. We want to exceed in every cup. And I think the only way you can really do it is if you focus on what you know best, right? Streamline the vertical chain of supply. Ver- focus on、uh, focus down that marketing, and not put that resources into trying to do everything. So I try to be good at one thing, and I think that's. How we promote our company is: if you want the best Indonesian coffee, you come to me. If you want the best Brazilian coffee, come to somebody else. Or if you want the best Ethiopian coffee, go to another guy, right? Because I'm not the best guy to serve you Brazilian, Ethiopian, Colombian. Although they're all great coffee too. So that's kind of like my tip. That's so wise, and it's this idea of niching down and being specific. Because if you're trying to please everyone, you typically please no one. And I think that is one of the coolest examples because there are so many different types of coffee, and you could say, "Well, we'll just do all coffee. That's small enough." But it sometimes isn't. You can get even smaller. So, guys, is there a way that you could specialize even more that you're not even thinking of that could truly help actually get you more、um, people noticing you out there by getting a smaller market? It seems counterintuitive, but take it from Michael. It works.、Um, cool. So the last question that I have for you today is: I know that you guys are actually a mission-based company, and that's some of my. Favorite ways、um, of doing business is making sure that the companies that I'm purchasing from actually have the same values that I do or have a mission behind them.、Um, so, can you talk a little bit about why you decided to put、um, this mission in your company and what that mission is,、uh, so our followers can kind of learn from this if they want to start a mission-based business themselves? Right. So, my company is called Tentera Coffee Roasters.、Uh, Tentera is an Indonesian word. That comes from Tentara, which is actually a soldier that does great causes. So it started. I mean, the whole idea about me doing this coffee company is one is entrepreneurship, right? It's something that I want to build for Indonesia because we have great coffee since the Dutch came. I want to promote it. But on the other hand, it's that mission brand,、uh, that mission focus. So it comes from the word Tentara, and my idea was I one day I went to a uh, conservation uh, in Indonesia. And we have the orangutans, the Sumatran tigers. I mean, all this wildlife. And and I I spoke to the conservationist, and I said, Hey, how do you really fund all your projects here? I mean, they, what you're doing is great. And he said to me, He said, Look, Michael, it's really tough because we are relying on 
really donations, one-off, you know, kind of like grants, you know. So we have to constantly, year over year, go fundraise to help us, uh, you know, do the things that we do out here. And I was thinking in my head, like, hey, what if, and, and I'm sorry, and then the next thing was one day I was reading an article about coffee, and coffee is actually the second largest most traded commodity in the world after mm -hmm. oil. Do you believe it? After oil, coffee is the second most traded, more than milk, more than water, more than anything else on the planet. And I said, and people are so into their coffee, and I find that coffee is so, um, coffee has no boundaries, right? Everybody drinks coffee around the world, uh, whether you're male, female, every profesh, profession, every demographics, every income level, people do drink coffee constantly, three times a day, even. Right. So I said to myself, what if I can take coffee, something that has no boundaries, has no limits and use that product and give a piece of that product sales back to conservation, then conservation will never have to go fundraise again because now they have a reliable, a sustainable source of income because coffee keeps selling. And so I said, hey, I think we can build something that's great and help these conservation projects. So I started that idea and believing in that and I just kind of do it. And then that's how we started selling coffee. So now we give back 1% for the planet. We've been giving back to WCS uh, uh, to kind of help their conservation efforts and programs in Indonesia where coffee comes from. So, and I, I think that if this model works, then we want to expand this to through different parts of the world. Yeah. That so that's what Pantera good. means to fight for a good cause. Oh, I love that so much. And I feel like when you have that mission, it's so much easier to stay motivated when things get challenging because you're working towards something bigger than just yourself. So I think that's amazing. Um, thank you so much, Michael. You have been a, such a gem of wisdom for our followers. If you guys want to learn more about Michael, I'll link his information in the description here. Let us know what you love about this um, in the comments below, and we will definitely get you in touch with Michael. Thanks so much again for joining today.